So here we are on the Women's Power Hour show, and I would like to introduce my guest today, Catherine Remington, who is the founder of Full Focus Clinic, personal development coach, driving success in conscious professionals. Catherine, welcome to the show. Hi, Ron. How are you? I'm fantastic. All the better for having you on the show. (laughs) Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely brilliant. Now, Catherine, we want to find out obviously a lot more about what it is that you're doing and who you help and have a conversation around self-care. But before we get there, what would be really great for the listeners is to find out a little bit more about you, personal professional, and what led you to do the work that you are now doing? Sure. So, well, gosh, I've had quite a journey, to be honest. So um, in my younger days, I was quite the nomad. Um, I traveled the world without, you know, without care, flitting from one thing to another and just generally kind of enjoying life. And, nice. um, and then I met my husband when I was in London and did that really grown up thing of settling down, you know, <laughs> and buying a house and having children and all those kind of things that completely change your life, turn it all around. Um, and I kind of fell into sales when I was working with my husband in London and, um, and I was good at it. So that was kind of where I was at. Um, and then, of course, I had my um, my firstborn, my son. And when I was with um, when I had him, I was a, a corporate sales manager for a, a large communications company in London. Um, and I realized that when I had him, I didn't quite want to outsource the parenting. Um, you know, I didn't want somebody else to, to basically work to pay for somebody else to, to bring up my children. So yes. That was the point then that we realised that something needed to change. And we lived in Essex, you know, mortgages were high, rents, bills, all that kind of thing. Um, so at that point, we decided to move to the country. Yes. So we up sticks from Essex and moved up to Norfolk, where I bought into a franchise business. Um, and that was a wonderful company that I bought into. It was called the Wow World Group. It was all sensory development for, for babies and kind of went into to this kind of wonderful world of working with babies and um my family used to call me Mrs. Tumble because I was kind of this kind of crazy woman who used to do all these wonderful things with shakers and um and and you know <laughs> and parachutes and things. Um and so I grew that business from one class in a small town called Down and Market in, in Norfolk um, up to 14 different franchises ranging across sort of four different programs. So we had prenatal, babies, toddlers, um, and then ranging into uh, a science um, franchise as well up to, to key stage two. So all of these things, and, and, and I built that with um, 22, I built 22 strong women helped me build nice. that, that franchise. Um, and of course, my wonderful husband also joined when we had the, the science side of things. Um, so, um, so 22 strong women and a wonderful guy. Nice. Uh, so we had yeah and and it was really brilliant and it did exactly what we wanted to do which was kind of allow our allow ourselves to have much more work and life flexibility and that balance that we wanted but whilst doing that my son he was three years old when we found out that we um that he was he had autism um and of course like anything when these kind of things approach you um what i did was extensively read about it um, and one of the things that really struck me about autism was that there was quite um, that, that people with autism um, can have quite a negative pre, pre, um, predisposition. So, yes. you know, and with that then brings poor mental health. And, and I, I was determined that this would not be the case for my son um, and that I was going to help in any way that I could. So I investigated different ways that I could do that. Um, and then just became fascinated with psychology and mental health and um, really kind of the positive psychology. Um, yes. How, you know, and so actually what I did was I started a degree in psychology and counselling. And at the same time, um, in my usual way, because I'm kind of one of these go hard or go home kind of people, <laughs> um, I, I also at the same time as started my degree, I started a 12 month um, clinical hypnotherapy diploma as well. <laughs> so, because, yeah. Why yeah, not? You do, as well as running a business, obviously, you know, just juggling a few things. Um, and over the years to come, as I say, I, I really enjoyed the positive psychology side of things. It really fascinated me. It fascinated me how our brains work. And, yeah. and it also fascinated me as to how if we, and, and this was through practice as well, especially with the hypnotherapy, if we really understand our brains and, you know, as complex as we think of them, they're not particularly that complex. You know, there are some very simple mechanics that we can help ourselves to, to feel good and to feel better and to, yes. to train ourselves um, to think positively. But that when we do understand ourselves and we can actually do whatever it is that we put our minds to. Yeah. 
And that is kind of the, the, the pinnacle. That's kind of the moment where I just thought, you know what, um, I've loved my time as the, you know, this, this franchisor and I've really enjoyed building these businesses, but actually now I want to go into helping people expand their minds and to, to be the person that they can the, the, be the biggest, you know, have that potential to do whatever they want to do. So um, I sold up my existing business and that's when I started um, the Full Focus Clinic. So helping people be incredible in any situation that they, they could possibly be. <laughs> and, I've never <laughs> and do you like all the skills that you had from your different roles so from sales to obviously the franchise you know have you been able to pull on those in this new business absolutely so I think that you know the sales side of things I've always been a natural communicator I've always yes. been good at communicating with people um at any level you know I'm 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 very confident I've never had the kind of you know I've never shied away from anybody or anything um, and so that the sales I was really good at the sales side of things just purely because actually I can read people and I can understand people and then I think that you know and everything else just kind of fits into place um, when it comes to that so the sales side of things really helped me in fact when I was living in London and met my husband me and him were doing door-to-door -door sales at the time <laughs> So I was knocking on doors and our ethos, the whole thing was that you used to have to knock on 100 people's doors and have um, 80 people talk to you, 20 people not even answer the door. And out of those 80 people, you were only looking at signing up four people for the, the you know, what we were what we were selling. Yeah. Um, and so therefore, my kind of general philosophy was, well, if I have to speak to 80 people and only get four people signed up, I've got to have 76 people say, tell me to get off their land or touch <laughs> the door in my face or, you know, so actually that really helped me um, to, to understand that negatives weren't particularly, you know, to, to deal with the negatives that you yes. could beyond that, because for every person that told me um, that swore at me, even um, I would kind of go, OK, that's one less that I've got to do <laughs> and move on to the next person. So actually, that, that was like really good training for me. <laughs> brilliant yeah, yeah. That says no that's one off the 76 we're all going to be back in I love it uh, you know and, and now I sort of I teach resilience skills now and I think you know gosh if I could put anybody out there on the field to knock on doors for even just a week that would build that resilience that would break or build you one of the two but um but yeah you know so actually it is that kind of understanding how you can get beyond things and and using yeah. those as a positive so turning yes. things back so yeah, I think the sales side of things and that communication really helped me sort of build where I am today. Yeah. Um, and then of course, you know, with the franchise and as I say, you know, 22 very strong, wonderful women that I had as a part of that franchise allowed me to really sort of understand how to, to be a better leader, understand the psychology of people in business, yes. um, you know, because especially if you own a business or even if you're a professional, you know, life is up and down. And so you have your good days and you have your bad days. And actually it's when you have your bad days, which are the most important is those, those days where you can really understand that you're down there, but actually, how am I going to get back up? How am I going to get back to the bit that, you know, that, that everything's starting to, to work for me again. Yeah. Um, and when working with all these women and, and being able to see those bad days and see those bad times and be able to help and assist them to sort of see the light again and bring them back up um again really sort of you know built the basis of, of what I do now yeah. um and you know I, because it happens to the best of us you know even even and I am very much the optimist um, my, my glass is always half full but even the best people kind of you know can can have those days where they just think oh why am I doing this what am I doing this for um you know and but it's being able to recognize that and bring yourself back up and that's what I I inspire in people that's why I help people to 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 be able to overcome those yeah. days where you know where they do feel that way fantastic well yeah. let's take a little break now Catherine because I want to speak a little bit more about that exactly what it is that you do and how you help people see the light again I kind of like that little saying so we'll hold on to that and we'll come back just after this. Well, joining me in the studio today is Catherine Remington, who is the founder of the Full Focus Clinic. And she has been generously sharing some of her story into what has led her to her current business and talking about her sales background and actually being a franchise 
or <laughs> franchise or um, a leader of many amazing women and a wonderful husband to assist, of course, also. Um, and you just started to touch on Full Focus Clinic and the kind of work that you're doing now. So it'd be really good to hear exactly what it is that you do, how you use your different skills to help your clients. And, and who are your typical clients? Well, so we're, my clients actually range really from solopreneurs um, all the way to CEOs of large organizations. Um, so the range of issues can be quite vast, to be honest. Um, although they all kind of are underpinned generally by stress. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the thing that we all hate is that, you know, the, the thing that we all suffer with and unfortunately quite regularly at the moment, especially. Um, and I think in terms of the issues that come through, so I, I, one thing I have seen a huge increase in, um, especially obviously over the last 18 months, we've had the pandemic hit yeah. and things have changed considerably for people in business, whether that's owning their businesses or whether that's working in business, just, you know, and I think home working from home has been a huge, yes. a huge negative impact on people, positive too. Um, but in terms of working differently, um, if you, you know, a lot of managers have been coming through to me because they, um, they're, they're suffering with something called imposter syndrome. Um, if you've heard of imposter syndrome before. So, you know, that kind of internal feeling, I think we've all experienced it at some point or other, uh, where you feel that you're not quite as good as what people around you think you are. Um, and at some point you're going to get found out like that kind of feeling. Yes. And I think with, so many people at the moment feeling so challenged in so many different ways and being pulled in different ways than they normally are um and as I say working in different locations that's kind of something that's really really coming um come to light a lot of people have been coming to me with that um and and generally a lot of managers because actually managing a team of people in an office is so different to managing a people pe team of people online or remotely yes um and not to mention the fact that we are all in this, we're all living in this pandemic. So actually, just because you're a manager of a team doesn't mean that you're exempt from any kind of mental health issues too, you know, or feeling that low mood of, of, of you know, what isolation and loneliness and all the rest of it has, yeah. or, you know, um, and that's not to mention even if you've, you know, you've had any COVID in the family or any kind of issues along those lines. So in the last 18 months, my my main thing has been that um, and generally kind of helping people pick their motivation back up again. Yeah. Um, a lot of businesses have had to go online because of the pandemic. So that in itself has changed a lot of, you know, it's a completely different kettle of fish when you're dealing with people online as you are in face to face. So, again, it's kind of just bringing people into that. You can do this mentality. Yes. You know, um, and a lot of what I do is almost stems back to kind of a bit of an um, accountability. So, you know, there are re there's research out there. There's um, it's, it's been proven that actually if you become accountable to to what your what your actions are, then that, then that increases your likelihood of um, of reaching those goals or, or what it is you want to become accountable for by 95 percent. Wow. Which is an incredible increase really um and so the you know more motivation when you tell somebody you're going to do something you've got more motivation to go and do it um, and i had this not long ago i was doing um a course actually um on linkedin myself to sort of increase you know my my sort of um skills on linkedin and we were doing it as a part of a group and i this lady i said to this lady on a one-to-one -one that i was thinking about doing a video on linkedin and putting it out there and then she told everybody in the whole group that i was going to do that. <laughs> and that was kind of that i was like right okay well i have to now so you know the next day there was my video <laughs> Yeah. And, and that is exactly what I do in terms of making people accountable for what they, you know, what they setting out to do. So if, if you're, you know, you're a solopreneur, it can be quite a lonely business. Yes. Um, you know, and, and actually coming from a franchise background, that wasn't the case with that kind of a, a network. There was huge support in that network because you all had your individual territories that you used to work in. So everybody helped everybody. Um, it was a mainly female dominated industry as well. So we were all together. Yes. And it was really lovely. And then when you go out there in the big bad world and it's, it's quite scary and, you know, you set up a business regardless as to what that business is. You can't go down the road to the person who's running a similar business and say, hey, mate, what's working for you? This looks great. You, you've got loads of customers. How do I do that? Because they would just tell you to, to jog <laughs> off. You know? Keep moving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
So it becomes, you become very isolated when you're on your own in business in that respect. So having someone there to be able to bash ideas against or to just say, hey, I'm going to do this and great, or when are you going to do it by? Um, and gives you that motivation to be able to do it. A lot of my, well, everything I, I sort of run by actually is very solution focused. So when I talk to my clients to start with, we do go through how they work internally and in, in their brains, you know, we make sure that they understand the power of the thoughts and the power of the mind and the power of the I can and those positive affirmations that you can tell yourself. And so, you know, that accountability all fits in with that kind of empowerment and the and the, the I can attitude isn't it yeah. um, and the minute that you can do something you do something that you've told someone you can do oh you you know your confidence levels self-esteem everything <sighs> rises so yeah. it, it's all linked and it's all down to those thought processes and being yeah. able to, to to do what you say you're going to do so yeah. yeah excellent okay let's have another little break when we come back I want to speak a little bit more about a terminology um, that you use which is about recalibrating the mind because I love that that sounds so brilliant so let's have a little break and we'll come back and speak to you about that Catherine right we are back in the studio with the very lovely Catherine Robinson who has been sharing some insights about uh, well sharing about her personal story but also some insights around the work that she does helping people to I'm going to use the term again see the light but really about tapping into their potential um, that's very much part of what you do and I know that when we spoke before you there was a term that you said about recalibrating the mind like hitting the reset button what exactly does that mean and how are you able to identify that as the need you know somebody's need okay well I think you know as humans I think that we can all be our own worst nightmare really can't we sometimes when it comes to our thoughts um and quite often I'll say to people you know the things that you think would you tell a friend that you know would you tell them that they're useless or that they can't do something and you know all these things that we tend to tends to go round and round in our thoughts um, and the reason that we are our own worst nightmares is actually because all of our experiences really shape our brain. Yeah. And that's called neuroplasticity is, you know, different experiences change the pathways in the brain. And then that changes your beliefs, your likes, your dislikes, your, you know, and, and your capabilities it goes to then, isn't it? Um, but what that also means is it, it creates limits um, that we put on ourselves, those limits, we, we see the, the, the sky sort of comes down and the glass ceiling becomes too tight and we can't, you know, expand ourselves. So, and I think, again, everybody's been in that situation where we've thought we're perhaps going to enjoy something, uh, sorry, um, that we're, we're not going to enjoy something. And then when you actually go and do it, it was all right. It was quite, quite OK, yeah. you know, but that's our thought processes telling us we're not going to be able to do it or we can't do it or we're not going to enjoy it. And then suddenly, you know, you push yourself that little bit. Oh, OK, I'm going to go and do it. Or someone makes you accountable <laughs> like me. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, then, and you go and do it and you actually find that, you you know, it's fine and it's good. So you're changing those kind of um, those those thoughts. And I think that is where the recalibration comes in. You kind of, you know, if you have managed to recognize the thoughts and beliefs that you want to change or you've become accountable to somebody, it's, you've told somebody you're going to do something. So therefore you have to go and do it now. That's what recalibration is. That's you're recalibrating the way that you think. Yes. So basically you're hitting a reboot button you know and I, I quite often talk about the brain as being like the motherboard of us you know mm. it's our computer motherboard it's the system that runs everything um and so actually the reboot button and the reset button and the recalibration seem to be quite a nice fit yes. yeah. for that. um and I think you know once you push past those limits I think my clients are just quite amazed at how when they can recalibrate um, they can do whatever they put their mind to and they're amazed at how much they're really capable of when they do that yeah. so it came about actually when I was chatting to somebody and I referred to the brain as that control system and they said you know oh, I'm talking about a reset button and that was kind of that's just really <laughs> struck me and really stuck with me so yeah so yeah all about recalibrating the mind and changing those thought patterns to make it work for you we all need a reset every now and then Absolutely. And I think that's that is the important bit. We need it now and then. It's it's not just like a one off 
thing that happened it, it's consistent right for yeah, all of us absolutely. absolutely well you think yeah. even like even a computer does jam up if it's too full doesn't it you know it's not <laughs> laggy and you know you can't uh, it, it glitches the systems glitch if you've got too much memory and you know taken up and, and and it is just like you know our brains can store too much can have too much in there and actually sometimes you do need to just recalibrate and um and and, and hit the hit the button yeah nice love it okay let's have a little break and we'll come back for a little bit more chat right we are back and uh, Catherine has been not only sharing her own journey, personal and professional, but she's been talking about the work that she currently does, helping her clients to recalibrate their minds, hitting that reset button, which I love. Might have to steal that from you, Catherine. <laughs> I really like that. Um, and I guess as somebody who is, you know, I'm an advocate for women's health. I believe that self-care is essential. It's not a nice to do, it's a necessity. And as we think about recalibrating, you know, how does self-care kind of play into recalibrating or how can we use that recalibrating to help women? Because so many of the women that I see and speak to, you know, haven't got, they feel they haven't got enough time or they don't think they're worthy um, or, you know, they just feel guilty if they say no to someone so they can claim time for themselves. How does that recalibrating kind of show up and, and how do we best support them in those situations? Well, I think you're completely right. You know, I think in terms of um, where there's so many of us feel guilty for taking that time for ourselves, don't we? But actually, we've really got to think of it in terms of our brain needs nurturing, you know, and, and I always use an analogy with people a little bit like the, if the brain was a muscle, like, say, for instance, a muscle in your arm is, you know, and if you want to you want to see growth in it, then you have to stress it first. Um, and then when you stress it, if you carried on stressing, it, if you continually stressed it, then you're going to cause yourself injuries, you're going to cause muscle pain, stiffness, soreness, all of those kind of things. So actually, if you want that lean body, you have to take rest days. But the problem is that people don't see your brain in that respect. You can't see your brain. Um, thankfully, like unlike the arm, you know, if you do rest your stress and rest your brain, it doesn't get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, we do need to make sure that we're concentrating on on, on resting that side of things or, or allowing ourselves that that rest time. So and the way we do this is through self-care. And when we do practice self-care regularly, like you said, it's a necessity. Yeah. Um, then actually what we do is we improve its performance and we see the growth just like you would in a muscle. So you would increase your mood, you'd increase concentration and you'd let it work at its most efficient. And people do feel guilty. And women, I think, are, are especially bad at yes. feeling guilty about it, you know. And I think this is because as women, we tend to run around after so many people, not just ourselves, don't we? You know, especially if you've got children. I mean, like, you know, I'm, I always joke about how well organised I am because my calendar has four spaces, one for me and one for one for each of the rest of my family, you know, and I've got to fit the dog in that as well at some point And, you know, those kind of things. So, you know, we're always running around after other people and we tend to take we forget to take time for ourselves yes and then we kind of you know there's that whole element of time etc that you were talk talking about but even if we just spend 20 to 30 minutes of just some downtime for ourselves that's going to help calm our mind I also use the analogy of you know the snow globes that you used to get when yes you, you sort of um so I, I tend to say to people if you think of a snow globe when you shake that snow globe really shake it you can't see what's in the middle because all you see is this whirring of snow that's going around or glitter or whatever it is that's in there so you can't see the the object that you're you know that, that's in the center of that snow globe so I think if you think of that as your brain and all of those whirring snow pieces are all your thoughts, whether, you know, whether they be negative or positive, it doesn't matter. It's just crazy thoughts going around, all this whirring around in your mind. What happens when you put that snow globe down is that the snow just starts to nicely settle. And eventually, when it's completely settled, you can beautifully see, um, you know, the object that you, you that's in the middle of that snow globe. So if you think of that as your brain, 
you need to put that snow globe down. You need to settle the dust. You need to settle those thoughts once a day, just so that you can start to see more clearly. And actually, when you do that, it really helps you to, as I say, um, you know, calm the mind and it helps you then with everything else, because it's the rest that your brain needs in order for it to grow. You need to process things. You need to be able to um, to be able to take that time back. So it's 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 not just as you said. It's necessary. It's completely imperative. It's like the oxygen mask on a plane. If you remember back to when we could travel, <laughs> way back when. Let me see. Hold on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, they tell you on a plane, you not you know not to fit anybody else's mask until you fit your fit, fitted your own. And there's a reason behind that is because you won't be any good to anybody if you can't breathe, you're not going to be able to put. So this is the same with us, you know, don't feel guilty about taking that time to, to you know, cater for yourself, to, to give yourself that self-care. In fact, right at this minute in time, I'm going to prescribe all of the listeners at least daily self-care just to calm that mind. Because when you're calm, good things happen. Thinking yeah. positively happens. And then that not only brings benefits for you, but everyone around you so actually don't feel guilty because everyone will get your best version if you, yes. you, know, if you give yourself that that self-care mm. yes lovely Catherine speaking right into my heart then I love that <laughs> because it is so true and I think it's that it's almost like that that sense of guilt by resting like if I don't if I'm not doing something then nothing's happening something's always happening you absolutely have to stop and you know catch your breath because if you don't I guess for me what I always think is it will show up in other ways it will impact your health somewhere along the line mental health physical health mm -hmm. emotional well-being all of those things then start to suffer um, and it's like why do we have to so often go there before we do something about this yeah and, and you know and it, and it comes and goes doesn't it we have busy times in our life where we you know it, even with the best will in the world you know having you don't get that 20 minutes a day etc but you know just to remember and to bring it back in as soon as you can um will will recalibrate you <laughs> will yeah. recalibrate will hit that reset button and you know it doesn't have to be anything in particular you don't have to spend time doing you know costly things it could be just a walk being out in nature um reading a good book anything that just focuses your mind on something that's not the work the whir yes. of the, you know, the whir of that snow globe that's going around, you know, if you're reading a book, you're concentrating on the words in that book and you're engrossed in the world of the book that you're in, as opposed to, I must do, oh, I forgot to do the dishes today and this has got to be, and so-and-so school money's not put in and, you know, and it's just all these random thoughts that come into your mind. Um, you know, meditation is fantastic because you can clear your mind, but often people find it difficult to meditate because yes of all of those intrusive thoughts that just come in. So find, if you know, you find something that just refocuses your attention on something that's positive that you enjoy, there's your self care. And that's, that's the prescription that you need. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, there we go. You've heard it here from Catherine. <laughs> Get to it. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, we're going to have one more break, Catherine. When we come back, I'd just like for you to share with the listeners how they can find out more about what you do. Sure. Well, here we are, a final round of questions, well, I would say round of questions, but maybe just one more question, Catherine. Um, you have very graciously shared about your own journey and spoken so beautifully into, you know, our potential and being willing to kind of step into our best selves and knowing that it's completely possible, but also making sure that we are self-caring through that journey as well, because it helps, it kind of adds value. Um, I'm sure that our listeners have been fully engaged and are now carving out their self-care time as we speak. <laughs> um, but where can they find out more about your work, uh, engage with you, please share. Sure. So um, my, my website is the best way to um, find all my contact details. And you can find me at fullfocusclinic.com. 
Um, and on there, if you do want to get in touch, I actually run free business clinics once a month, um, usually at the beginning of the month and they're via a Zoom call. Um, anyone is welcome completely. You don't need to show your face. You can chat if you want to ask any questions um, or feel free to come in and just be a part of the, the, of the sessions. And they're kind of built around things like anxiety, procrastination, um, self-limiting beliefs, all of those kind of things. So um, it's an hour session, there's question and answers at the end, and it's just generally some information and, and a nice way to, to get to know who I am and to, to get some free information from me as well, which is always nice, isn't it? That's always a bonus. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, so fullfocusclinic.com is where, they, where you can all find me. Um, and, um, and please, as I say, feel free to come along to one of my workshops. Um, book yourself in It'd be great to see you all wonderful fantastic well Kathleen thank you so much today thank you so much for your insights and for your tips um, thank you also for opening that space where people can come and find you and perhaps engage in listen it's something free <laughs> listeners that you can go and engage in and that will give you uh, an opportunity to connect with Catherine and find out more about what it is that she does and if she's somebody who may be able to help you. Catherine, what can I say? Thank you so much for joining the show today. Really appreciate having you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a complete pleasure. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. <laughs>